In this video we're going to discuss electron configurations. So you probably discussed electron configurations of atoms in general chemistry and you're more than familiar with the kind of 1s2, 2s2, 2p6 type of nomenclature that we're going to introduce here. But now that we know so much more about quantum mechanics and uh, Hartree-Fock theory and atomic orbitals, we can put ourselves in a little bit better position to understand why uh, these electron configurations result and understand better uh, some of the exceptions to the rules that we have. Okay, so the first uh, atom we have is hydrogen, which we could solve the Schrodinger equation for exactly. And that gave us these orbitals over here on the left in yellow, where we had each, uh, each quantum number n, the first number here of the atomic orbital, set the energy levels, and the 1s would be uh, one energy level available. At n equals 2, you had four orbitals, um, 1s and 3p orbitals. At n equals 3, you had nine orbitals. n equals 4, you had 16. And then the angular momentum being s, p, d, or f for l equals 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. So uh, using the Aufbau principle, obviously we want to fill up the lowest energy orbitals first. So for hydrogen, that meant that the ground state was going to have 1s1, or we're going to have one electron in the 1s orbital. Then going on to helium, we know for Hartree-Fock we saw that using a spin we can have one spin up electron and one spin down electron in that 1s orbital, one alpha and one beta spin. So that means we can put two electrons in that orbital through the use of spin and not violate the Pauli exclusion principle. They're in different spin orbitals, but the same spatial orbital. So helium, we have a 1s2 uh, configuration for those electrons. Okay, then lithium, we add the third electron. Uh, we again fill up the 1s subshell. So we have 1s2. Now when we get to the n equals 2 level, um, having these additional electrons makes these uh, makes these atomic orbitals not exact. So this nice uh, even splitting where we have all these energy levels uh, are proportional to 1 over n squared and all of the different angular momentum values are degenerate, all of that gets broken by the fact that we have multiple electrons. So this, this non-degeneracy of all these different angular momentum values is just because uh, these, are these atomic orbitals are now an approximation. These type of orbital approximations are, are not exact. They are an approximation. And it just gets us in a position to understand uh, what the wave functions of many electron atoms would look like. And it turns out when, you, when this happens, uh, s orbitals in the, two, in the n equals 2 state are lower in energy than the p orbitals. So the first orbital to get occupied is the 2s, so we have 2s1. Then beryllium, similarly, can occupy the 2s2. We have a spin up and a spin down electron in the 2s orbital, one alpha and one beta electron. So four spin orbitals, two spatial orbitals filled thus far. Then going into the p block on the right hand side of the periodic table, if we go to boron, then we're going to start filling up the p shell beyond that. If I kind of put some electrons in here, one, two, three, four, number five going in there. Then we have 2p1. <clears throat> and this continues all the way until we would get up to neon filling that shell. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. <clears throat> okay, so then that would be the next electrons going all the way in there. Okay, then we go up and things are pretty much the same on the third row. Um, we have things like, if we pick an example like aluminum, we're going to have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p1. Now the time, by the time you're getting here, things start to get uh, quite obnoxious. There's going to be a larger and larger number of terms as we, as we go on, so we want uh, certain short shortcuts for that. So what you can use are 
what we've probably seen before are noble gas configurations, things like helium or neon, argon, uh, krypton, etc. And then just include what they call the valence shell, which is the uh, highest energy uh, orbitals beyond a full noble gas configuration. So for aluminum, that would be equivalent to saying, not argon, equivalent to saying neon, 3s2, 3p1. Okay, then when we go up to n equals 4, you start getting uh, confusing things that will happen, and you have the d orbitals start getting involved, but uh, one interesting thing ha that happens is that the n equals 4, the 4s orbital, actually becomes lower in energy than the 3d orbitals. So you have the 4s orbital starts to be filled before the 3d orbitals. So this is why we have the uh, d orbitals and the transition metals starting to appear in the fourth row of the periodic table rather than in the third row and before the p orbitals uh, rather or in a sense after them rather than before them why the why the three d orbitals do not follow the three p but instead they follow the four s okay so we can have something like oh if we could say zinc Zinc would be something like, we could say it has argon, which is the third, the third row noble gas, and then 4s2, 3d10. Okay, then that, then that pattern continues into uh, n equals 5. We fill the, fill the 5s, and then the 4d, and then the 5p. But as you go on, then you get uh, the F elements as well. And so one way in which you can remember the order that these are filled, besides just looking at the periodic table and, and uh, interpreting that from the structure of the periodic table, is to build this kind of diagram that I, that I have right here. So I have uh, the uh, energy levels of N, the principal quantum number N, uh, in, the, in each row here, N equals 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. And then all of the allowed values of angular momentum uh, for that le for that shell as well. We have L equals zero for S, L equals one for P, two for D, F, G, etc. And the way these are filled is if you take a line and you draw a line starting at the top right of each row and then go down to the bottom left. So first we're filling up the one S, helium and hydrogen, or hydrogen and helium. Then the 2s, lithium and beryllium. Then the six atoms of the p block, the 2p. Then the 3s. Then next is 3p, 4s. And then this correctly predicts that you have 3d, 4p, 5s, 4d, 5p, 6s, 4f, 5d, 6p, 7f. 5f, 6d, 7p, and that covers pretty much the entire periodic table uh, as it exists today. Uh, there's hypothetically could be larger elements, but as of the making of this video, we haven't observed any larger elements yet. But if we did, they would fill up the 8s orbital and then the 5g, etc. Beyond that. Okay, so that's the basics of electron configuration, and there are some exceptions. Uh, dealing with metals and such, and we'll cover those in the next short video.